All right, so today's class is, did Jesus really exist? Anybody ever thought about that? How do you know he exists? Anybody? How about the big tough guy over there? <laughs> how do you know he exists? Just, you know. I don't know he exists. Yeah, how do you know? All right, so maybe he doesn't know Jesus really Bible, existed. Maybe. Okay, he thinks the Bible is a valid source. All right, I'm not saying that's wrong, just that's your opinion. Okay, David? I think most of us grew up just being taught that he actually exists. So he was, David said, we were taught that. You grew, you grew up in the church, your parents say he exists. All right, Dad, he exists, fine. You know, and then we, yes, sir? Um, before I believed in the Bible and before I was raised, like actually came to church, yeah. um, I I called upon his name and he answered, so it just proved in my personal That was life. it. You had an experience with him. Impressive. And that, you know, it, just so you guys know that some people would j just totally discredit that. I mean, when you're looking at historical stuff, they'll just say, mm -hmm. bro, that ain't. But it really is a valid way to know that he's real if, if you've been changed. That is really valid. And we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end, but that's certainly valid. Um, all right, so for the rest of us, why do you believe it? Like David said, which is a lot of us, I had my own experience with that. Is it because we grew up believing that? Uh, like a lot of things, we grew up believing and we just, oh yeah, that's how it is, because that's what our parents taught us, you know? Um, do you maybe don't believe? Do you really not know? And I hope today you get a little grasp on why. And maybe why is it important and for, you know, for some, we're going to go over, like, hit some history. You think, look, who cares? All I need to know is that I've, I've experienced him, and that's all that matters, which is good. But uh, I don't know if, if when, you, when you try to, when you talk about Jesus to some people, they'll ask you, or they may bring up facts, and they, like, you know, they never said anything about Jesus it, you know, in the time and the period when he existed, how do you, you know, how do you know he's real? What is your faith based on? Uh, you know, who, who was there? Is there any evidence 2,000 years ago that he actually existed? Do they have any statues of him? Anybody write about him? Something like that. So, all of that. If there is nothing, it's going to be tough to try to prove your case. But today we'll find out if there is or not. Do you guys think there is any evidence yes. outside of the Bible? J.C. believes there is. Outside the Bible, do you think there's any evidence to prove Jesus really existed? Not whether he was God or not, which we've been studying, but has, did, did he exist? Which, what are, what are our, raise a hand, do you think he did? Outside of the Bible. Alright, I see some iffies. David over there, I'm not sure. Alright, so, here's what we're going to do. We're going to split the class in half, that's why I've done this, uh, and I need your help. <clears throat> so all the skeptics, who's the skeptics here? I'm just kidding, you won't, you won't show yourself, that's fine. We're going to make the right side the skeptics, and we're going to make the left side the, the, the ones who believe it's actually true, okay? We're going to go through some things, and we're going to try to prove and, and disprove whether it's true or not. But before that, did Tupac exist? All right? So, or is he dead? Well, that, that's besides the point. Did he exist? Yeah. All right, skeptics, any proof against it? They never found his body. They never found his body. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was whether he died or not. But did he exist? Okay, this probably isn't a good one to argue about. But there's lots of, there's lots of disbelief on whether he's dead or whether he's alive. But that's besides the point. We just want to know, did he really exist or not? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got his picture right there. Okay, so, yes, he existed, unless that was his phony. <laughs> what about 9-1-1? 9-11, sorry. You know when they hit the Twin Towers? <laughs> George Bush by then. All right. Maybe you should have been on this side, skeptics. But it actually um, happened. But it actually happened. All right, so there's disbelief on, you know, the, the uh, interpretation of the event. But we all can agree it happened, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? One thing we know, 
like I said, we, we all disagree on, on what happened, who did it, all that. But we all agree it did happen. All right, so what we're going to look at today is there's a lot of disagreement on who Jesus was. Because it's outside of the Bible, this is from sources who may not agree, but they agree with one thing, that he did exist. And that's what we're going to look at today. Um, so, uh, to, get, to just understand for you guys that may think, ah, oh, this is so boring, why should we study this? Is You do need to know the facts. This faith we have isn't just blind. I don't believe it. We shouldn't believe it just because our parents told us so. Uh, and I think we're all getting to that point to where this is real. I actually want to study this. It, and it's in this, like that for me with trees. I, uh, I grew up doing trees and my dad taught me certain ways, but I want to know, is this really the right way to trim trees, you know? Are you just telling me this? So, I, you know, I've done my own research and study and, you know, got some certifications and things so that I'm confident in what I'm doing. And then I'm hoping that this helps you become confident when you talk to people about Jesus, but also in your own faith with Jesus. Um, and just in, in, in my experiences with this topic is that I never used to be able to talk to anybody about this. As soon as they said facts and history, I was like, oh, I'm out. No idea. You know, but as I began to study it, I gained more confidence. And I've actually chatted with people. Recently, I chatted with a customer of mine. We were talking about trees. And then he's like, yeah, it's, I told him it's amazing how the trees are so similar to our bodies. And he's like, yeah, it's just the ancestors way back. I said, well, you know, I just I actually believe, or I said, I lean towards the creation point of view. In, and then we got on this whole topic and we went to this to the historical Jesus well you know they don't really prove that and I said wait a minute here you know so <laughs> I didn't know any of that before but I did and I we had a great conversation I even told him the gospel you know so but he said he like he's he's done his research he was well prepared but we had a good conversation I held my ground decently I felt so hoping it gives you some inspiration to learn so that you can talk to people because this this is the big question right now. Everybody's learning. We have college, we have internet, everybody's learning. And we can't be dummies according to our, you know, regarding our faith. We do some research so that we can talk to people. All right, so what are we going to look for today? We're going to look at some quotes. We're going to look for, did the authors believe he existed? That's the one goal we're at today. We're not going to, our goal is not to determine what they believed about him, but did he exist? What do they affirm about Jesus and Christianity, the, the records? And um, what are the doubts? We're going to leave that to the right side. You guys present your doubts as we go. Because even in light of all this, people still don't believe it. Um, so let's get started. Historical evidence. So we want to go back to see if Tupac existed. We just go back years into writings, movies, whatever, historical evidence, people who've written stuff. That's what we're going to do, but this goes back 2000, okay? Tough. But they have stuff. So it's it's delegated into the three pieces. Uh, you, you may not remember this, but that's okay. Three pieces of evidence when you go historically. It's classical, Jewish, and Christian when you prove Jesus. Classical is uh, pagan. It's non-Christian. Jewish is Jewish. And we have Christian, like the Bible, or letters written between other believers. But that one we're not going to do today because a lot of people think that when you go to the Bible, when you go to people who wrote because they believed in Jesus, they take that as a bias. Oh, you wanted to believe that. We can't trust you. And maybe we have one more class, and so we may do that next week. I'm not sure on whether you can trust the Bible or not. But these are the three ways. So... <clears throat> Let's get started. So we have several quotes. I don't think we're going to get through all of them. Um, but I want to get through some, just so you guys can see that there is evidence. So, the first guy named Talus, I think, 52 AD. When was Jesus born, supposedly? Anybody know? You with the yawning face over there? You don't know. Anybody else? <laughs> Alright, so when did he die? These are very important facts, guys. You need to know this. All right, so Jesus. All right, so uh, <clears throat> you know that the time is split in half, right? When we look at the timeline of history, it's split in half. <clears throat> right here, actually, this can be a cross if you like. <clears throat> that splits time. 
BC and AD. All right, or BE, I think, BCE and CE. Is that right? Okay. All right, so Jesus right here, and this was about, uh, ooh, ooh, ah, I forget, three to six. I, I may be wrong there. All right, but we know that he died. Sorry, the cross shouldn't be here. My bad. The cross is over here. 33 A.D. All right, that's when uh, we believe that he died. All right, so that was his lifetime right in here. So, when did people write about him? That's what we're going to look at today. And this is the first guy, 52. All right, so this is a few years after him that he wrote. Uh, who was he? He was... Um, he was a, I didn't, I didn't write down who he was, um, but this one's a little different. Julius Africanus in 221 wrote about what he wrote about, okay? This is the first one, the earliest. This guy, actually, there's no, um, none of his writings have been preserved, but somebody wrote about his writings before they were all destroyed. All right, so that's the first one. Of course, there's a lot better evidence, but read what it says. I'm going to have uh, David, if you would mind, please read the first one. On the whole world, on the whole world, they're pa they're pressing the most fearful darkness, and the rocks were rent by an earthquake, and many places in Judea and other districts were thrown down. This darkness, Talus, in the third book of his history, calls as appears to me without reason an eclipse of the sun. All right, so. Uh, Julius Africanus wrote about what Thallus wrote about. Thallus existed in 52 AD, or that's when he wrote that. And what is this event he's talking about? There was a, all right. There was a big, there was a darkness over the whole world. Rocks were rent. There was a big earthquake. Uh, lots of places <laughs> fell down. All right. He wrote about an event. Okay, so. We know that that's written in the Bible where it says that when he was crucified, there was an earthquake. Everything went dark. People came out of the tombs, you know, stuff like that. So if you were a skeptic, no, actually, sorry, let's do this first. So what does this prove? This proves that there really was a time like it's written in the Bible where Jesus, when he died on the cross, there was darkness. over there. It really did exist, all right, according to this one. It's a little sketchy because, yes, somebody wrote about what he wrote about, so... Whether you can trust that or not is, you know, we can get deeper into that, but there's a lot of depth. But if you were a skeptic, what would you say? Let's say for the right side. Let's say that you, you, you're you trying to prove that Jesus, this didn't really happen, or you're trying to disprove this away. I mean, it just says nothing about Jesus, like, in there. Don't say anything about Jesus. It's like, there's earthquakes all the time. There's still lots of earthquakes. Yeah. All right. Uh, darkness, the rocks were rent, so, you know, everything went dark, rocks, so, I mean, you could just say, well, you know, this could be anything. could be, you know, an eclipse of the sun. Um, there's a lot of, there's a whole um, big paragraphs after all this that kind of go into the discussions and still prove how this is good. Um, but uh, we, we just, it would, we wouldn't be able to go through it all. But I have it all printed out if you guys want to look at it. It's really awesome. For every one, for every one of these, there's a skeptic behind it saying, no, nah, wait a minute. Whether it's true or not, I, don't, I, didn't, I couldn't buy it. The other side uh, does a great job of refuting it. Um, but it's pretty awesome that something like this actually happened. Yes, sir. So, um, back to your question. If I was a skeptic, I think uh, the first thing that I would ask is, um, well, how old is um, <coughs> Thales yeah. at that uh, 52 AD? Like, how old is he? And then uh, I'd begin to backtrack how many, how, how far that was from his death, and how old was he? Um, would he be able to remember it? Like, I would just begin to question, like, uh, time. Was he, did he live during that time? Yeah. I think. All right. Um, so, uh, I guess, you know, so these are, you know, they're valid things to think about because this is what people are thinking about. But if you were on the right side or on the side of proving for this, you could say, well, actually something did happen. Let's trust that his records were true. Let's trust that maybe it was that. How can we say it isn't at the same time? You know, so it's just, you know, we're not sure, but there's 
There's some pretty awesome evidence. There's actually one more I didn't put in, I don't think. Um, but let's go to the next one, because there's more. They get, they get, they're pretty awesome, some of these. Next guy is Tacitus. He's one of the most trusted historians. So, 2,000 years ago, this guy wrote a lot of stuff. He was one of the more trusted ones, most trusted ones. He was a senator, proconsul of Asia. He wrote this, called the Annals. You know, just like people today wrote, uh, what is that trilogy of you know, the Hunger Games? You know, not that's fiction, but somebody wrote a series of books, historical, and uh, like a biography. He wrote the Annals, and uh, this is what he said. And I'm going to ask Kimberly to please read this whole thing for us. Pay close attention, guys. This is his account of something that happened, 116 A.D. All right, so shy of a hundred years after Jesus' death. Consequently, to get rid of the report, Nero, <coughs> Nero fast, fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hatred for their abominations, called Christians by the populace, populace, Christians from whom the name had its ori origin suffered the extreme penalty during their reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators. Procurators. Pontius Pil Pilate, Pilatus, or something. And a most mischievous. I can't read right now. <laughs> Superstition. Oh my goodness. I can help you if you want. Can you read the rest? Thus checked for the moment, again broke out not only in oh Judea, the first source of evil, but even in Rome where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their center and become uh, popular. So it says, Consequently, to get rid of the report, Nero Faust in guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hated for their abominations called Christians by the populace Christus, from whom the name had its origin. Um, and it says, Suffered an extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators. So, what is this saying? What is this saying? What is this proving? JC? Uh, there was a guy who <clears throat> took the name of Christus. Okay. And he suffered. Mm hmm And he took, uh, he was uh, put in trial by, he was in trial with Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilot. Pilate? Mm hmm In Judea, so it's just, it just fits the picture perfectly. Yeah, fits everything. All right, so a guy named Christus, he had followers named Christians, mm -hmm. which Nero was persecuting at that time, um, and it says that he ex suffered extreme penalty under the, the reign of Tiberius, uh, Pontius Pilate. So this is proving big stuff. The Bible talks about Jesus was crucified, Pontius Pilate was the guy in charge at that time who uh, sentenced him. Um, Christus, I, I think it's a Latin, I don't quite remember, um, but they had followers named Christians. So, when you go back 2,000 years, they're writing about this stuff. Christians, Christus, all that stuff. And if, when, you know, when, when you get into the skeptical side of things, they look at, well, this Christus, there could have been any Christus, or stuff like that. But you just dig deeper. That's all you do. Don't get scared and like, oh my gosh. You dig deeper. When you dig deeper, you find it. You find the truth. And that's, that's how it works. Um, but this guy, this, this is one historians really, really, he's one of the most trusted and he wrote this, and it says Nero, which was a real guy who tortured Christians, said he existed. All right? So that's number two. Uh, do you guys have anything to say about the skeptics? Do you want to uh, just help us not believe what he's saying here? Anything? Steve? Um, skeptics? Yeah. Like, that's us? Yep. Um, his name wasn't Christus. Uh -huh. oh. yeah. uh, what else? Mm. Pontius Pilate. <coughs> his name wasn't uh, Pilatus. It's Pilatus. It's Pilatus. How do you know? I know. <laughs> you guys, what would you say to that? Anybody? I, it's the different language. Yes. Yeah, so how they Christus. Say yeah. Prove it. Christus. You get deep, you know, like when you get into the Bible, when you study the Bible, you look at the Hebrew and the Greek and all this. They do that for these 
These are historians. They study. They study this guy's writings. Is he reliable? And they say he's one of the most reliable out of all of them. So to take this seriously, Jesus did exist. He did have followers. He was crucified. They had taste of that. But they don't say something. What do they not say? They don't believe he was God. They don't believe he was the Son of God. You know, they don't, they don't say any of these things. They're just attesting that he was real, which is what we're looking for. The interpretation is, is you know, that, that comes, that kind of has to be made on your own. All right, let's look at another guy. Pliny the Younger. All right, this guy's crazy. Uh, he was a governor of Roman province, and he was writing to Emperor Trojan, Trajan, describing the lifestyle of the Christians. In even some other writings, he was writing to him saying, how do, I t how do I get rid of these guys? How do I torture them? You know, he was saying, I'm, I'm, I'm new at this. I don't know how to deal with these Christians. And this is what they say. And I'm going to ask Elmer to read because he's such an excellent reader. Uh, please. Um, the day the Christians were in the habit of meeting on a certain fixed day before old life, when they sang in, in alternate verses a uh, hymn to Christ as to a God, and bound themselves by a solemn oath not to any wicked deeds, but never to commit any fraud, theft, or adultery, never to false, falsify their word, nor deny a trust when they should be called upon to deliver it up, after which it was their custom to separate, separate and then reassemble to partake of food, but food of an ordinary and innocent kind. All right. So what, what is this saying? Or what is this proving? Any Anything? They worshipped him. They worshipped him. They even said they worshipped him as God. Mm -hmm. Not that he believed it, but he said that's what they did. Mm -hmm. He was just observing what they did. Anything else you notice? So, you know, if we're looking back in history, did Jesus exist? What can we get from this to help us prove our point? Guillermo, anything? When you see Christians, you got to think about that too. Is there Christians? Why, you know, because those are his followers. They named, you know, they're named after Christ. So I mean, that helps too that they were around that early. Um, they're probably different to the other people around that time. They had qualities that may have been a lot different. Obviously, yeah. Look at that. All these things they take. They would take oaths. They would not. I didn't mean it in a bad way. I just meant you know that's right. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Uh, uh, so they would sing hymns to Christ like he's God. Crazy, huh? I mean, we were studying that. So he would notice that. Uh, they then they would bind themselves to an oath. We're not going to do anything wicked. We're not going to you know we're going to do everything right. We're not going to commit adultery. We're not going to tell lies. Um, so so this was pretty awesome. So. They believed Jesus, so it tells us that the first Christians believed Jesus was God. They upheld high moral code, and these early followers met regularly. That's They were doing that years after Jesus was crucified. This is what they were doing, which is what we're doing now. So, you know, it's, you, know you, you guys are carrying on a tradition, a not just a tradition, but a, a way of life that has been going on for, my goodness, thousands of years. All right, so that's the first one. Uh, uh, I didn't ask the skeptics if you guys had anything to say against that. Is this one a little more difficult to try and refute something? And just some, you know, some basic stuff. You don't need to get all too deep. Kim, you have any doubts here? What else could they be talking about? Maybe some crazies worshiping the wrong guy. Could be, huh? Could be. Whether we trust this guy's opinion or not, that's a whole other issue. But these these are these are some trusted historians. All right, we got a couple more, two more, uh, of the uh, non-believers. Suetonius, this he was a Roman historian, sixty-nine through one forty A.D. So Jesus died around thirty-three. He wrote in, he was his lifetime was sixty-nine to one forty. He was born after, but he wrote about events that occurred before. So he would either talk to eyewitnesses or he would talk to, uh, or he would research to find these things out. Uh, and this is what he says, and I'm going to ask uh, David, would you please help us? 
Read what? Uh, this quote here, because the Jews. Because of the Jews at Rome caused constant ter disturbance at the, was it? In instigation. Instigation <clears throat> of Jesus Christ. Whoa, say Jesus Christ? <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, oh, bro, hang on, try that. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Crusty? He, <laughs> he, 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 all right, so what's this one saying? What's this one proving? Because the Jews at Rome caused constant disturbances at the instigation of Christus, he expelled them from the city of Rome. All right, so something was happening. The Jews were causing a lot of trouble when they were interrogating this Christus. Somebody was named Christ, getting interrogated. The Jews didn't like him, or you know, they were just causing a big uproar. All right, so you're seeing this. These are facts that are proven. People written, recorded things happening. Um, going down this last one here. Nero inflicted punishment on the Christians, a sect given to a new and mischievous religious belief. So you can see this. His opinion on the on Christianity was, you know, he said this is a mischievous belief. You know, he's a, he has no respect for it, kind of thing. So, we're not looking for whether he agrees or not, whether he believes it. We're just looking, is it recorded? Jesus, and it is. Christians, they're around. And this last one of the classical, Celsus, 175 AD. This is probably the craziest one. Uh, so, we'll have JC read this one for us. Sure. Jesus had come from a village in Judea and was the son of a poor Jewish who gained her living by the work of her own hands. His mother had been turned uh, out of doors by her husband, who was a carpenter by trade, on being convicted of a thus driven away by her husband and wandered about in disgrace. She gave birth to Jesus, a bastard. Jesus, on account of his poverty, was hired out to go to Egypt. While there, he acquired certain magical powers which Egyptians pride themselves on possessing. He returned home highly elated and possessing these powers, and on the strength of them, gave himself out to be a god. All right. So, what things? What things does he admit to? What things does this help prove? It sounds like uh, it sounds like the media talking about Trump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, a couple things he says. Um, Son of a poor Jewish Jewess, um, his mother had been turned out of doors by her husband, was a carpenter by trade, convicted of adultery with a soldier. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I was looking at the thing up here, but it doesn't quite go with it. So, just saying that he was born, um, he was he was a says bastard in there. That just means no father. Um, so, whether he's alluding to she, he was born a vir of a virgin, um, or you know just that she didn't have a father, but I think that's what he's saying is that he's born of a virgin. We, you know, we don't know who the father is, although he's saying he committed adultery with some guy named Panthera. So, uh, bastard is a, a son or daughter born outside of marriage. Outside of marriage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so it's it's. Talking about Jesus, but it's saying it's saying something important that he had magical powers. All right, <laughs> saying he had magical powers. So what is he? What is he saying? Was hired out to go to Egypt. While there, he acquired certain magical powers which Egyptians pride themselves in. He returned home highly elated at possessing these powers, and on the strength of them, gave himself out to be a god. All right. So what is it saying? This guy's interpretation of what Jesus was doing is that he learned all this stuff in Egypt. But he's proving that Jesus did miracles, that he did signs and wonders, he did stuff like that. But he's, he, his interpretation, or the way he's saying is that he went to Egypt and he learned all this stuff. That's how he you know, kind of proved it away. All right. So these are just some of the things, 175 AD, that's not very long after uh, to write about it. He, of course, he wasn't an eyewitness, but he would research and study these things and write it down, just like you know we do today. All right, and there's, there's two more I want to go over. We're going to look at some Jewish guys. So that was people who are not Christian, not believers. 
And I want to look at two Jewish people. Uh, this guy's named Josephus. Anybody heard of him before? Josephus? Uh, so he was a Jew. He was actually in a war, and he surrendered to the Romans. They took him in. He added a Roman name to his name, Flavius Josephus. And he became a historian, and he wrote this book called The Antiquities of the Jews in 93 AD. And he wrote this for the Greeks and Romans so they could understand how the Jewish religion was indeed, um, was, was uh, like uh, good, was, it was, I forget the word, moral, had virtues, you know, was, it, was it a good religion. And he wrote this book to them, and this is a quote he put in there. Uh, and Samuel, would you mind reading it? Oh, sure. Um, now around this time lived Jesus, a wise man, for he was a worker of amazing deeds and was a teacher of people who gladly accept the truth. He won over both many Jews and many Greeks. Pilate, when he heard him accused by the leading men among us, condemned him on the cross. But those who had first loved him did not cease doing so. To this day, the tribe of Christians named after him has not disappeared. All right. So what's he saying? He's, what, is, what is he proving in this? He was crucified. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that he was crucified. Uh, there was actually a guy named Jesus. He was a wise guy, a uh, wise man. He did amazing deeds, kind of what the other one was saying, except he said he, he was Egyptian magician. Yes, JC? It sounds like he was also warned by him because he says that uh, amazing deeds as a teacher of people who gladly accepted the truth. Right. He's not denying that it's not the truth. They're saying that it might not. He's saying it's the truth. There's another quote that he puts out that there's a lot of um, skepticism on it because it sounds like he's a believer, mm -hmm. but from all of his writings, it never alludes to him believing it himself. You know, so that they, you know, just in reading all of his stuff. It doesn't look like it. He believed it himself. But yeah, of course, that, that kind of sounds like it. Yep. So I, I don't know. Um, but as far as what's known by pretty much everybody, they say he wasn't a believer. Also, when it says that the tribe of the Christians has not disappeared, yeah, it means that they, they're loyal they're and still they, going. they believe it to yeah, heart. They're still yeah. going. Yeah. Right? So... You know, to, to think that it, uh, uh, that they're still going after a hundred and something years, it's like, wow. Yeah. I mean, how long have we been around? I'm 25, you know, 23, around there. You know, so you guys, 20. You know, imagine a hundred years for things to still be going strong. Uh, and this is 2,000 years later, and all of us are in here thinking, hey, is this real? Mm -hmm. this happen? You know? So we're reading about it. Uh, so these, you know, it's, it's, it's proving these things. So it's not like your faith is on, well, I don't know if this happened. I just trust my parents. No, if we research this, stuff happened, and it's written down. It's recorded in history. And we're going to look at one last one, uh, the Jewish Talmud. So this is the writings of Jewish people collected in a book. Um, all the rabbis are right, and they wrote some stuff about Jesus. Uh, is that Jesus practiced magic and led Israel astray. Sanhedrin, Shabbat, Shabbat, all these different pages. So that's what they said about him. Jesus practiced magic. It's believed that they wrote this through the 1st and 2nd century, but the whole collection is about 500 AD. That's when it was. All right, so this is one more. It was taught on the day before the Passover. They hanged Jesus. A herald went before him. For 40 days proclaiming he will be stoned because he proclaimed magic and enticed Israel to go astray. That anyone who knows anything is in his favor come forward and plead for him. But knowing nothing was found in his favor and they hanged him on the day before the Passover. Alright, so they're writing down about this. This is not from the Bible. This is ex, you know, sources outside the Bible saying that before the Passover they hanged him. That he did magic. That he was... Uh, uh, he led Israel astray. So this is the Jews, and we know the Jews, or the, the Pharisees, didn't like him. And this is their interpretation, opinion of him. But they're giving us some good evidence that he was there, he did stuff, which we believe is miracles, JC. When it says hanged, yes. is it crucified? On, so, like the, hanging on the cross? Right, so that, that brings up some skepticism. Thank you, Mr. Skeptic over there. Uh, so wait a minute, Jesus wasn't hanged, he was crucified. But... 
at least what I was researching is that when they mentioned hanged, that they were, at that time, they could also be alluding to cross because you could be hanged on a cross, hung on a cross. Like tied onto? Well, you're just, you know, hanging up there. Oh, you're just hanging. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, dig a little deeper and we, we can find it out. All right. So we're going to start, uh, we're going to conclude today. Uh, so, I, like I said, I know it's tough, all these facts, but it'll help because when you get in a conversation and they ask you, uh, why do you believe what you believe? You can start, well, I believe that there really is evidence, historically. And these are some of them, if you can remember some. Um, but there still, there still are historians who don't believe this. There still are historians. Like I said, I looked up some atheist websites. Right there, they go through these quotes and they say, no, this is why this is wrong, this is why that's wrong. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's uh, just like everything else. It's just like everything else. Just dig deeper. Uh, don't you don't want to trust everything? If you don't want to trust what I'm saying, go research it. That's I hope you do, because when you look for the truth, you're going to find it. Uh, you just have to keep digging if you don't have a you know a bias. Um, but the crazy thing is the two historians who criticize people who don't believe in Jesus are atheists. The two historians who believe that Jesus existed who criticize the most. Other historians who don't believe, they're atheists. They don't even believe Jesus was God. But they know that He did exist. And that's all they're trying to prove, is that He did exist. So the interpretation of who He was, and how did He do what He did, that's where you know you have to come to your own understanding. Um, so I think that what the whole thing is just to help you understand, what is it that you believe? Like, you know, we ask certain people, they're like, hey, I don't know. But we, I, I hope that you guys can really know why you believe. So that, because we want to multiply this that we have. Um, if it's true, this is a, if it's true, this is huge, guys. If he wasn't a magician, if he wasn't a phony, if you know that, like they say, he was a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. Can't be all of them. He can't, you know, one of the. He's one of. He's one, liar, lunatic, or Lord. And according to this, some of these people, they think he was crazy, but he did have magical powers. Uh, he did exist. Um, but some of the questions that we need to ask for those of us who claim to be Christians, uh, which I think is a great majority here, is, you know, was, was he crucified? These are some other questions. Did he really rise from the dead? We didn't get into any of that. Um, is he God in the flesh? Is that who Jesus was? Or was he just a good prophet like Muslims believe, that he was just a prophet? Or is he God? Is he the Son of God? Uh, is he still alive today? How are you going to prove that? But that's what, you know, as a Christian, you may think it's like, oh, I'm a Christian, I just go to church. No, you claim a lot of stuff when you label yourself a Christian. You claim that you believe Jesus did exist, he did rise from the dead, he is living, you know, and He saves people today. That's what you believe. And there's no, you can't be a watered-down, happy Christian like, I don't know if I believe all that, but I believe, you know, this. When you, when you confess to be a Christian, that's, you, you believe the whole thing, and, and that's, that's all you really need at first, to be saved, to make it into heaven, eternity, is you believe that Jesus died for your sins, that He rose from the grave on the third day, and that He um, died, rose again. Shoot, I went blank on the last part, but I think those are the two right there. <laughs> Sorry, video, my, my, my mistake there. Uh, and Romans, I forget what it is, but He died on the third day, He rose again, which we're going to talk about today in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, about like Jerson preached last week. Those are the main things. So if this is your struggle, you're going to have to ask yourself, if you really don't know if Jesus exists or not, you really have to ask yourself, am I really a Christian? Because I, you know, you got to understand, I, I don't expect you to know all the history. But I just, there's got to be a reason why you believe what you believe. If it's an experience you had with Jesus, that is evidence enough. That's evidence, if you believe the Bible, that's evidence enough. Maybe you don't understand all the logistics, that's fine. We're going to, we'll learn that together, we can learn it. But you have to have a reason. It can't be because that's what I was taught. That, I mean, maybe it can be for you, but to hold up against telling other people, it's got to be better than that. It's got to be that, no, I, I believe it. Not because somebody else believes it, because I do. And why? 
So, you know, that's the biggest thing. So just, uh, just to, the last thing is, uh, there's this guy named Lee Strobel. Uh, anybody ever heard of him? Young lady in the back, heard of him? Lee Strobel. He was a skeptic, he was a journalist, and he went on this journey to try to disprove Christianity because he thought it was crazy. His wife became a Christian. He says, I need to disprove this. This is nuts. And he went on his journey to disprove it. But, he's, but you know what got him interested in becoming a Christian more than all the evidence? He saw his wife change. He saw something happen to her. He said, man, what is, why is she lying? I mean, she didn't used to be like this. She's different. She has like a joy about her. She's, um, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what he said, but he saw a change in her that was attractive. And he says, I like that. I don't know what it is. And, and she, you know, she didn't go through all the historical things with him. She just said, no, I believe it. And look at what it's done to me, you know? And that's, you, you'd be surprised, that is more persuasive than any speech you can give on historical. You know, just let Jesse go up and this is who I used to be, this is who I am now. You know, everybody will see, he's Lord, and my gosh, you know, <laughs> that's a miracle right there. You know, it, it, it truly is. It truly is for someone to just change like that. It's amazing. Same with my dad. That's, you know, and that's, I believed because I saw my dad and I heard how my dad used to be. And the change in him, I think, man, that's it. And I watch him. I watch how he lives. And that was what encouraged my faith. I didn't know all this history. But for some people, this is really important. And for us as Christians, we should know this so that we can help other people come to know him too. So this is just one part of it. Uh, and we're running out of time. Praise the Lord. Right on time. All right, so do, did Jesus really exist? That was what our class was today. And you should know that there are historical evidences to prove it that go way back. And possibly next week we're going to discover whether you can trust the Bible or not. We didn't use the Bible once today, guys. Not once. All these other extra biblical sources talking about it. And whether we can trust the Bible is the next thing, possibly.